Alrighty, welcome back. Here we go again. Jump right into the campaign. Uh, LP, here we go. Okay, here we are again, hanging out in the hangar here. There's our uh, lovely Devastator. Uh, this mystery plane back here that seems to have no bearing on uh, anything, as near as I can tell. Uh, we are heading up to Pacifica to rescue Dr. Fassenbinder. Uh, we got that emergency call from his daughter in the last video. Uh, Pacifica is, of course, the remains of Northern California, Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia. So if uh, absolutely nothing else, it'll be very scenic over there. So, now we can go mess with our planes, now that we finally made some dang money. So, let's open this guy up. In order to make a plane, you have to come up with a name first. Not sure why that is, but uh, I'll play with it. So, name your plane. And then here we go. We've got our, uh, our blueprints thing here. Uh, we get to select an airframe. We get to see how much money we've got over here. Uh, basic breakdown of the airframe that you're looking at. And then this over here. This is the main thing that you are looking at. The weight capacity and then the current weight. Uh, the stock versions of these airplanes tend to be right on the money. Uh, 10100, 10100, there we go. Uh, and then as you adjust armor and guns and engines and all that kind of thing this is of course going to change but you cannot go over the capacity of the airframe so the stock version of the devastator is uh, pretty good across the board it's about what you would expect from the starting plane in any game but i think i'm about done with the devastator for now so let's check this out look at all this fantastic stuff we have available to us here uh if only we had had the money to deal with it there's our lovely belmoral brigand that we just got kestrel and peacemakers that we've been dealing with so far. This time we're gonna do do a uh, a brigand here for Fairchild. So let's see here, uh, 110,000. So it's a little bit heavier than the uh, Devastator, as we can see. Average, average, fair. So it's not quite as agile as the old uh, Devastator. But we are going to do some stuff to it. Uh, so, uh, there's a quick little breakdown here, but holy hell, this font does not look good at this resolution. So let's just uh, not deal with that right now. Uh, here we go. Uh, tab 2 is the engines. We can mess with the engines here. Uh, you generally have two or three choices to choose from, at least th at this point in the game here. We've got the uh, Pratt & Whitney 4, 6, and 800. As you can see, as I click into the 800, it pushes us uh over the weight limit though our top speed goes from average to good uh let's see if i can read this here this is our top speed goes from 240 miles an hour to 264 miles per hour that's quite good uh unfortunately i don't think we're gonna be doing that uh at least not yet so take a look at the armor here we go uh any of those guys who play the uh crimson skies board games can go into more detail here Honestly, I don't know what a unit is, whether that's a, a pound or a thi Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, 20 pounds per five units. All right, well, whatever. Uh, if you played Mech Warrior, you're familiar with the armor system, adding it to various things. I'm uh, I'm pretty good at this game. Pretty sure I'm, uh, I'm not going to be getting hit, so uh, I'm okay with reducing this armor. Uh, let's see, moving on. We've got the guns, of course. Uh, we've got a turret tab right here because as you can see we've got a massive turret on the back of the plane uh, not entirely sure I'm gonna be hanging on to that uh, so moving on hard points hard points of course are the rockets uh, you can fit uh, quite a few rockets onto some of these things I think the Belmoral has four hard points under each bloody wing so that's silly and then paint job so it is time to build ourselves a plane. Uh, so we're gonna do a Fairchild Brigand. I uh, named it the Honest Mistake, and so let's go ahead and deal. First things first, get rid of this blasted turret. Okay, we've already lost quite a bit of weight. That's fantastic right there. So, uh, we can do, let's see here, 60 cal Cheyennes are pretty good. 30 cal Zephyrs. I think we're gonna be looking at some fairly short missions from for now, so I don't think we need to deal with too terrible many uh, different types of guns. So let's see, we'll move this 60 cal up to... Hmm. Oh, by the way, you see you can buy individual guns as well as pairs of guns. Always buy your guns in pairs. 
you do not want to have a 30 cal on one side and a 50 cal on the other side. They have different ranges, uh, different, uh, different convergence zones. I mean, it's just a huge mess. You'll never hit anything. Uh, so, uh, let's see. We're going to be looking at duels here. So, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? We've already got a Cheyenne over there. Let's do a 50 cal. Hard to go wrong with a bear at 50 cal. And, of course, we can decide what ammo goes in there later. Let's see here. Armor. Armor looks pretty good. I don't anticipate anybody being on my tail, so let's go ahead and uh, drop that down a little bit. 25, bring this guy down to about 15. Nose. Why would anybody be shooting me in the nose? That's ridiculous. Bring that down to uh, 15. Okie doke. So, uh, weight is down quite a bit. Weight capacity. Okay, this is looking good. This is looking good. So, um, as you can see, our stuff has changed a little bit. Our agility is still fair, but our offense has dropped a bit, uh, mostly because of that turret, so, uh, boo-hoo. So, I believe we can get another couple of hard points. Oh, oh, not quite. Okay, uh, so that's, what are we missing for that? Three hard points, one, one, one versus one, one, oh. Okay, we'll do three hard points and maybe drop this by just a touch. Uh, more than a touch? None? No armor? Okay, I don't think this is a good idea. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Alright, well, that's not looking too, uh, too bad there. I uh, don't think I can quite cram a larger engine in there yet. Uh, which is a shame, but right now these are just standard engines, uh, nothing really to, uh, to get too excited about. Um, later on we'll have some new engine options there, so... Well, it's not looking like there's a whole lot else to do here, but uh, we are still a little underweight, so I suppose we'll just, uh, just fill that back up with armor. Yikes, we put all kinds of armor. Armor. All right, that's a little silly. Okay, 60 cal. Let's just bump this guy up to uh, to a 60 cal, and I think we'll be uh, I think we'll be pretty happy. You certainly don't need 35 units there. 25, 20. Okay, 25 across the board. That looks good. Sorry, this is taking a little longer than I thought. Okay, three hard points, two hard points. That's better than the Devastator, I, I think. Uh, paint. Okay, um, all right, let's just uh, see how how horrible we can make this. Go with a shade of gray. Actually, that looks kind of cool, but we're not going to do that. Uh, let's see, black, black, uh, black on things, black, black, no, black, yellow. Ugh. Actually, you know what? Let's see. Black, yellow, white. That's uh, that's honestly not too bad. Uh, maybe maybe make that gray. Ooh, ooh, no, that's bad. That's bad. Okay, uh, okay. Black, uh, black, white, and yellow. That's that's a good good Caltrans color. Good uh, good hazard color. Uh, let's see. Nose art, nose art. All kinds of great stuff. Too bad these are such low quality. This reminds me of old Descent Three. And all the silly nose art you'd see in there. Let's see. Hog Wild. Some kind of Joker man. Betty Page. Mistake! Her name is Mistake. How about that? But I don't like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, four aces. You know, aces. Aces over eight. Rockets. Angry face. Uh, various things. Pretty sure this guy was in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, and then over here you start getting all the nations um, of the various places. Texas, of course. Dixie. Sacred Trust. Uh, Columbia. Hmm. That might be Colorado? No, 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 that's, um, I think that's Hawaii. Uh, these guys, I have no idea. Maritime provinces, maybe. Uh, Medusas, Hollywood, uh, the Knights of something or other. Uh, of course, we're going to be running into all these guys later. This needs no explanation. Uh, so whatever, we don't need to go into too much detail here. We're certainly going to be here back in the future. So for now, we're going to go with the devastating Air Biscuit, this awesome-looking dog who's shitting a bomb or something. I don't even know what's going on here. Uh, get rid of this guy. 
That uh, Aces over eights thing looks pretty cool, so we'll take that as well. Okay, great. We've got an ugly ass plane, a huge turret that doesn't do anything, uh, and more armor than I meant, but I can't put a good engine in there yet. So, there you have it. Uh, it's ready to purchase. This is going to cost us $9,800, which means, hell, we can we can actually buy uh, a whole other plane if we wanted to. So, ready to purchase? Let's take a look at all this. Uh, okay, stock airframe, weight, cost, all that good stuff. R600, I'd love to get that up to an R800 at some point. Uh, 25 across the board, looks good. Double 60 cals and 5 hard points. Not too bad, to be perfectly honest. So let's go ahead and purchase that. Has been purchased and delivered to your hangar. On that note... Oh, come on, I don't want to... Oh, boy. Anyway, in there, there's a uh, there's an option for selling planes. And I'm going to sell the blasted Balmoral. I don't want that thing. Probably get back another five grand or so. So, here's our, uh, our new brigand. Honest mistake. Sitting there. Paint job's wrong. Uh, looking at these two, that looks like a brigand back there as well. So I guess that's what that is. Uh... Okay, pat the dog for luck. And let's go. Okay, you mugs. Listen up. Today's fun? Snatch my old friend Dr. Fassenbinder right out from under the Red Russians. <laughs> As you know, he's imprisoned aboard the passenger liner Workers' Voyage, which is already airborne. Already airborne? What's the doc gonna do, Chief? Step outside and just happen to fall into one of our planes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Huh? You see, these old Russian Zeps have a secondary docking hook here. It's only for emergency landings while the Zep is dead still. So it's too dangerous to hook up there while she's racing on all engines. Trust me, at full speed, the vibration and wind would rip a person right off that ladder. Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of this. We'll need to slow down the worker's voyage by taking out half her engines. That should reduce her speed enough so Jack can climb out of my plane and up that ladder. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> we'll shadow the Russian Zeppelin until she's out over international waters and attack her to slow her down. After that, I'll dock at the disabled Zep's secondary hook so Jack can climb aboard. And any Zep who gets in my way is going to be plenty sorry. <laughs> That's why you're the man for the job, Jack. Now, waiting on the docking hook would be suicide, so I'm going to launch and circle around. Now, Jack and I will stay in radio contact so he can tell us when he finds the doctor and hustles him back to the docking area. As soon as I hear from Jack, I'll dock again. Now, there won't be room for you and the doctor in the jump seat, Jack, so when the doctor and I launch, you'll parachute away and we'll pick you up later. Yeah, yeah, I can hardly wait. After that, I want everyone to hightail it back to the Pandora. There, we'll shoot down any remaining reds and head for the hills. Since Jack's riding with me today, I need Tex and Big John to cover me when I dock. No problem, boss. Yeah, as long as I don't have to ride the silk home like Jack. Ha 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 ha. Oh, those fortune hunters. All right, uh, let's see, change plan. So, as you can see, here's the honest mistake sitting there on the list, as well as these other guys. Uh, each of these represents, you know, each of these named planes here represents one that has been purchased uh, and therefore one that can be sold. So, uh, I'd have to be careful selling off these other ones if I were to sell off the Nave and Gypsy Magic as well as that Blasted Bell Moral. Uh, then all of a sudden my wingmates would not have any planes to fly. So, gotta, uh, gotta make sure you got something around. Uh, I'm not sure that the AI is quite worth all the uh, trouble. Of, uh, of really customizing their planes, but hey, it's kind of fun anyway. Uh, so, we've got uh, our dual 60 cals, which are going to be bloody murder up here. Uh, let's see, we will go with slugs in the one, with uh, explosive in the other. Oh, that'll be uh, that'll be something horrible. Uh, let's see, got some high explosives in here, that's always useful. And uh, old Galaga uh, on the forums there has pointed out just how blasted useful these flak rockets are particularly in uh, Zeppelin missions so definitely gonna bring some of those along high explosive for the uh, Red Russians um, yeah, don't have anything else yet but uh, but as I've said uh, we will have more options later um, huh you know speaking of wingmates I don't see my wingmates on here. So I guess they're not actually my wingmates in this one. They're just out there. Uh, okay, simple enough. Let's uh, do it.
<laughs> Good golly, Miss Molly. That has got to be the second ugliest thing I've ever been responsible for. Attention Pandora, man your battle stations and get those turrets firing! Here they come! Let's break them up, boys! Let's break them up, boys! Whoops, that was not what I was trying to do. What we've got here are a bunch of Russians in Devastators. Which, as you might imagine, could be trouble since they've, uh, worked so well for us so far. Speaking of working well, as much as I love this wood paneling in the, uh, in the cockpit here, I think I'm gonna go back to my usual thing. Alrighty, where's the bad guy? Switching over to my oh hell. Got him in good. All right, there's one. Now we got to be careful. These Russian devastators have flash rockets, and they are really good at uh, messing you up. Damn it! Did it again. Sorry about that. So much for the welcome wagon. Let's go see if anyone's home aboard the workers' voyage. Remember, gang. We need to knock out her engines in order to reduce her speed for the hookup. Switching back to flak rockets will definitely uh, do some damage on that. Count. Alrighty. This will be fun. So, got to shoot out some engines. I could do it, uh, do it like this, but it's a pain in the ass. You can see just how long this takes. There's one. There's two. Uh, two. And, uh, two engines in one run. That's not very useful. On target tail, over. On your right, Bandit Berry, 3 o'clock. This is a distress call from Zeppelin CCTV. Oh shit, that's confusing. Okay. Going back around. Cool, good shooting. One turret destroyed. If we Ooh, look at that. Two and a half engines right there. Workers voyage turrets, open fire. Oh. Watch out, bandit at nine o'clock low. Coming back around, gonna unload another couple of rockets here. This is where these extra hard points are gonna come in real handy. Okay, there's a couple of engines there. Woo. Keep hitting that button. Whoa, 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 whoa. On your left, bandit. Alright, let's do something about that. Uh oh, uh oh. Ooh, good thing I left some armor on there after all, huh? Pirate aircraft unable to shake me, over. Unable to shake me, he's right. As much as I love the brigand, it flies like a cast iron pig. Attacking enemy. I finished that one off, over. On your left, Bandit, 9 o'clock high. And he can outrun me, apparently. I must be jumping to parachute. Aye, alrighty. That does it, fellas. The workers' voyage is at half speed. Everybody keep the fighters busy while I hook up with that Zep. Okay, docking hook. Watch out, bandit, at nine o'clock low. Oh, hell, another one. Take care of this guy. Watch out, bandit at nine 
Don't need him shooting at me. Quiet, you! I have my target! Whoa. Broke enemy's tail, over! You need to chill the fuck. Hey, wait a minute. Does that mean that he's in? Oh, look at that ugly mug. He's in my damn plane again. All right, gonna throttle back here. This gets a little tricky. Holy shit! This is not where I wanted to be. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Luckily, you don't have to get too damn close to the thing. I'm here, boss. On board the worker's voyage. I'll let you know when I find the doctor. I'm away. Jack, let us know as soon as you find Dr. Fassenbender. I'll circle back and hook up so he can climb aboard. While we're waiting, let's Sir, shoot off some of those damn turrets. The Zeppelin has been spotted south of the worker's voyage. It's heading your way. South, south of the workers' voyage. Okay, let's see. South, Attention, south, CCCP workers' south. voyage. This is Black Swan. We have you outgunned. Prepare to be. Fuckery! What in blazes are you doing here? Hello, doll. Fancy meeting you here. Why you claim something? All aircraft attack! Big John here. Black Swan just lost her fighters. Headed her way, and they don't sound friendly. Over. Copy that. Hold them off, people! We have to wait until Jack has located the doctor. Boss, this is Jack. I found Fassenbeener and we're heading back to the rendezvous now. Over. Yeah, we'll make it snappy, Jack. An old friend unexpectedly dropped in and she's none too happy to see us. Old friend? Who? Black Swan. Swan? What does she want with an old Russian passenger Zeppelin? I was just asking myself the same question. Boss, this is Jack. The doctor and I are in position. We're at the landing hook and ready for you to come pick us up. Four more fighters just launched from the Black Swan Zeppelin. Over. Damn it, Zachary. You will pay for this. Sorry, dear, but you piqued my curiosity. I just have to know what's aboard that Russian Zeppelin that has you so excitable. Okay, you mugs. Let's down the rest of these Black Swan fighters so we can get a proper look at that Zeppelin unmolested. at all. Holy shit. Okay, let's get back to some useful ammunition. Hey Chief, didn't you hear Jack? He's waiting for you with the doctor. Why don't you go Oh my the fucking god. So you just gotta take out a couple of these black swan furies and then they kinda bug out and stop bothering you. Oh my god. I can I I've been hit bad. Woo, there we go. Ah. Uh-oh. That's a heck of a deal. Now I got to jump. That's a heck of a deal, all right. I got that one over. Oh, that's... Oh, well, this isn't going too well at all. Any help would be appreciated. Hey, Chief, didn't you hear uh, Jack? He's waiting for you with the doctor. Why don't you go pick him up? Nice shot, boss. Okay, I think yeah, we've just got one left. Oh. Hey, someone give me some assistance here. Over. 
Okay. Now we're all shot full of holes. Oh my god, not another one. Sorry I keep switching viewpoints here. I swapped a uh I swapped my usual buttons, I'm a little confused. Okay, that better be it. Oh my god. You know what, maybe these guys just keep coming. I'm gonna go ahead and get this last one. And then let's go do the uh, docking hook thing. Hey Chief, didn't you hear Jack? He's waiting for you with the doctor. Why don't you go pick him up? Woo, there we go. That's the last of the swan's cronies, Captain. Well, it looks like their zap has turned tail and run. The worker's voyage is ours. I'm away! Jack, I'll see you on the ground. Everybody else? Destroy any remaining workers, voyage fighters, then head back to the Pandora. What in the hell is shooting me now? Good work, Fortune Hunters. Now let's head back to the Pandora and let the boarding party handle the workers' voyage. Five Devastators and the Black Swan herself. Let me see a huge sound. Blah, blah 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 blah. So we were probably in the Seattle area, I suppose. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's see, Engineer Wiz Jones Bowling. Okay, so we got uh, Fashion Bender back. Uh, got him over to. Oh, well, there you go, Seattle area. Alright, fine. Um. Taking him to Boeing. Very good. Boeing's a pretty cool company. Zachary steals the Royal Jewels. Well, I guess we know what the Black Swan was doing over here. My goodness, look at all that. That's got to be worth some money. 5,000 buckaroos to be uh, precise. And then, what's this? What's this? A letter with the seal of the, uh, the Black Swan on there. Let's open it up. So, our money given our pass. I expected you to understand that. Uh, so, so, so. It's resettling the scar regards the black swan. A nice pink stationary. Goodness gracious sakes. There seems to be some kind of history here. So there you go. That was a fun little mission. Things are starting to ramp up a little bit in here. I think maybe the brigand wasn't the best choice until I put a bigger engine in there. At, uh... That was a bit like sitting on your front front porch and flying your house around, but uh, there are plenty more planes to choose from. And after this mission, we have access to the Fury, so let's take a look at that. All right, this time we got our hands on the Curtis Wright J-2 Fury. It's the latest in a line of aircraft directly descended from the original Wright Flyer. Developed to meet the demand for increased air power over the newly fractured Americas, the fearsome abilities of the Fury make it a coveted plane. The Fury foregoes the fashionable pusher prop in favor of a traditional propeller assembly that propels the planes to speeds approaching 250 miles an hour. The heavily engineered swept wing and short tail assembly maintains stability even in high speed flight. A massive 70 caliber Goliath cannon is mounted on a pylon along the plane's center line. The pylon is long enough to place the massive barrel outside the radius of the plane's propeller, eliminating the need for a prop timing mechanism and allowing the cannon to fire at full speed. Four wing-mounted 40 caliber cannons back up the Goliath punch, augmented by several versatile underwing hard points. In the right hands, the Fury is a devastating opponent. 
today's plane is the Douglas A-1 Sky Raider, an American single-seat attack aircraft that saw service from the 1950s to early 70s. It was a propeller-driven anachronism in the jet age and was nicknamed SPAD after a World War I fighter. The Sky Raider was designed during World War II to meet requirements for a carrier-based, single-seat, high-performance torpedo bomber and was a follow-up to earlier Navy dive bombers like the Hell Diver and Avenger. It made its first flight in 1945 and by 1946 was being supplied to Navy Fleet Squadrons. Its distinctive feature was large straight wings with seven hard points apiece. These gave the aircraft excellent low speed maneuverability and enabled it to carry a tremendous amount of ordnance over a considerable combat radius. It was optimized for ground attack and was well armored against ground fire. The A-1 was famous for being able to take hits and keep on flying. Production ended in 1957 with a total of 3,180 built. The Sky Raider had a remarkably long and successful career and inspired a straight-winged, slow-flying, jet-powered successor, the A-10 Thunderbolt.